one of the moments that I realized I wanted to run was being at City Hall one night for a city council meeting. This was probably five or six years ago now. And one of the city councilors asking me who was watching my son. And that was kind of a punch to the gut because it said a lot of things about uh, their attitude of like, you're a mom, you shouldn't be here, you should be home with your son. And at that time, I was working full time, helping, uh, you know, organize politically in Waltham, and then trying to go to these city council meetings to understand how the city council is working. And then to have an older gentleman say to me, you know, who's watching your kid while you're doing all this, or your son while you're doing all this, was like, my head just spun around because I was like, I thought we were past all Mm. of that. That's how the city council felt at Mm. that time was looking around was like, oh, well, women's voices don't matter. Like that's very instantaneous feeling that you got when you walked into that uh, room. You know, you're just you're leaving out such a huge portion of the conversation. (laughs) Like there are so many diverse voices in Waltham age wise, ethnicity wise, Mm. culturally and just none of that seemed to be taken into account when I looked at the makeup of the city council. Mm. And I felt like I had a perspective as a woman, as a mother, and I wanted to bring that to the city council. That was my goal. What advice would then would you give to other women that uh, are interested in a career in politics? Because, you know, in all my community organizing, I've actually found that it's more women that are interested in community organizing in Waltham than men. But there's this, there's the opposite disparity when it comes to wanting to very high rank for very obvious reasons, yeah. very valid reasons. Wow. But what but what uh what advice would you give to other women that are interested in pursuing that? You just kind of blew my mind with that statement because that is one hundred percent true. Absolutely. There's amazing, amazing women organizers in the city. But, amazing. Yeah. Looking at the decisions that led up to me wanting to run, I needed a supportive spouse a supportive mm-hmm. partner. And I needed a village, right? I needed my mom, my mother-in-law to and friends who had children who had run for office before that knew so that, you know, my son would be taken care of in the times that I needed to go um, and campaign or go to meetings. So I would say to someone who is considering running, just look at your village, look mm-hmm. at your uh, support system. And if you don't have that, Uh, ask someone how to build that because Mm -hmm. that's going to be huge. Two years ago when I ran, Mm -hmm. I encountered a lot more sexism and uh, just really strange behavior by uh, a couple of men. One who, I mean, he just played all of the greatest hits of you know, like I had Bennett with me and he was on a scooter and we were going through the neighborhood and it was like, well, how are you going to, you know, uh, be able to do the job and be a mom? And, oh, you said you work full time. Like, wow, that's a lot. You know, and you're standing there and you're in a vulnerable situation because you're trying to get someone to vote for you. So you're trying to be amicable and um, agreeable. He was complaining about the people across the street who, you know, were of a, a different ethnicity. And I mean, he just played every greatest hit while I was standing there out of this sort of discriminatory and, and offensive and ignorant, you know, playbook. And it was kind of like, okay, like, how do I wrap this conversation up? And I think my regret two years ago was I didn't stop that sooner and just say, well, you know, thanks for taking the time, you know, moving on because it's not worth arguing. And I think that's what I learned this year and this time around. And I didn't really, I only encountered it once, but I, I was prepared because I could sort of see the way this guy was coming at me. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, I was in a neighborhood setting and he was clearly the sort of neighborhood jester or entertainer. And so I didn't feel unsafe, but he came at me with, you know, are those shoes comfortable? Should you really be, you know, campaigning in them? And do you make your husband um, 
babysit your kid while you go out campaigning. And I mean, it just, it devolved from there. And as soon as I answered him, number one, my podiatrist told me I should specifically wear these shoes to campaign, but thanks for thinking of my comfort. And number two, what a great resource I have. Women who have run, my friends who have run for office before, our kids became friends, and now we watch each other's kids while we run for office. And he did not know what to make of that. And so I just, I felt more prepared this time around for some of the stuff that, and to shut it down and move right on to like, here's what the issues are, you know?